Hello guys, welcome here to another weekend of Tinkle Sports Talk. You notice um, week one progress is not very good so far. I'm not going to lie, I'm very cold. And it's yeah, like well I'm not out. cold. <laughs> I'm not cold, but I expected a little bit more hair after... Um, you know, I mean, I did I about a week out because I shaved, what was it, for, uh, last Sunday. Yeah, last yeah. Sunday yeah, we for Halloween. Did. So, um, right before I went to Buffalo, too, which was kind of ballsy going to uh, Buffalo in the cold and shaving the hair. But you know what? L made up and, for it. Yeah, and should I just point out, all of you anti-maskers Listen, can I just offer, Jason, trust me, you'll like where this is going. Um, can I just offer one bit of advice? If you don't, if you have a beard and you decide to shave it when it's 30 degrees out, wear a mask. Just because yeah, right? it's freaking cold. As, <laughs> when that hits your skin, holy crap. I'm oh, I know. You're just not used to it. That's why I'm saying wear a mask. <laughs> But, That's why I, I um, was outside and just like, holy crap, man! I was, yeah. I, I'm like, man, I regret not, you know, yeah. having a facial hair here. Um, I could have probably waited, but you know what? It's better I did it earlier in the day. Cause exactly. It's okay. Um, I made it. I made a work. generous donation. I did talk yeah. about it on no final bell. At the end of the show, I'll announce a little promo. Um, so uh, let's stay tuned. You don't know what's coming, but I'm going to announce a little promo about that. But noshave.org, the Tinkle Group is our team name. Help us tinkle right. on cancer this month. I'll be making my donation soon. I just uh, had some car payments to work through. Um, we're all set now. So now that I'm um, kind of on a little bit of a that better budget. who I know of, I am think I'm the only one that already has i just made a 25 dollar yeah and before you ask probably not anymore and i know that sounds bad for me to say hey, but okay. 25 is good enough <laughs> 25 hey whatever you can donate it's great to donate um also follow him on twitter at no shave i think it's at no underscore shave um that's where you can find out more information about no shave november on twitter um follow us of course on social media um we did mention masks earlier what about the astros wanting to wear a paper bag over their head uh, uh -huh. the astros Probably are 0 2 in world series since their cheating scandal as the braves finished it off in six games um mm -hmm. Boy, you know, they got a 3-1 to one lead. We thought they were going to blow it. And then the infield and really their whole, like, their defense is just phenomenal. They shut out the Astros and beat them pretty bad in the game six. Um, mm -hmm. So, I got to tell you. Yeah, it was 7 to nothing, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Did we not say six games or seven games? I, I'm pretty sure you said six. Actually, I think we both said. I think we seven. both said six. I, I think, think no. Have... I think I was. I, I'm pretty sure it was like. Cause... If I remember correctly, I think it was like me that said six, and I think you said something about seven. Yeah, I think I said seven because I was afraid of them getting a three to one lead and blowing it, and that's mm -hmm. how it started out mm -hmm. looking because the Astros did win Game Five, and it looked like there. Oh boy, do we have to fear another Atlanta um, choking job here? And Atlanta, by the way, can we finally put to rest the city of Chokers? Because the Braves have finally <laughs> ended it. Not that Chase Elliott didn't end it in NASCAR last year. Keep in mind, Chase Elliott, Dawsonville, Georgia, he was your NASCAR champion last season. Hmm. So, um, just thought I'd throw that out there. So, technically, now hmm. I think you can officially put to bed the city of Chokers and the state of Chokers. I don't know. I'll put it to rest if the Hawks can do something, yeah. and also the Falcons. Well, the Falcons That's when... closed out a game against the Dolphins. Yeah, but it's the Dolphins. One... No, it's but... the Dolphins. Listen, they could have blown that, okay? They could have blown that game, and they very well should have in London. And then they somehow held on. So, for now, it looks like they've uh, gone on hiatus as far as choking goes. 
Yeah, I mean, so the Hawks have Trey Young and the Falcons have Kyle Pitts. So, <laughs> two top guys. What can I say? Yeah. Sorry, I had to fix something. Um, we're still on, by the way. Um, but anyway, let's move on to our week eight discussion. Um, you know, all I will say is it was. It looks like it was a great World Series. I regret not watching a minute of it because, honestly, I just got busy. I was tired. Um, you know, as Jason showing on. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um. <laughs> all right, I guess. I'll start this off. I think I let you start last time, so I'll start I can't this remember. off. <laughs> um, so, much news this week. Derrick Henry likely done for the season um, with right. the ACL, or the foot injury, rather. Um, he might return in the playoffs. We just don't know. But as of right now, I mean, Titans, you let go of Marcus Mariota. Look at what he's done in... Uh, Las Vegas. I mean, he did okay in a relief effort last year, but for Ryan Tannehill, this is your prove-it moment now, okay? This yeah, team kept you around. You're getting paid, I believe, 120 mil on your contract, if I'm not mistaken. So, Tannehill, like that. this is your time to prove it now. You've got A.J. Brown, you got Julio Jones, um, you've also got Adrian Peterson, who just got mm -hmm. added to the roster, and you could say, oh, Adrian Peterson. And he's going to be... And he's going to be suiting up this Sunday too. Yeah, and don't, or actually next Sunday. When it's next Sunday, he will. Actually, I'm I'm pretty sure it said when I looked that it would that he was going to suit up. Yeah. For this game. But can I just say real quick though that Adrian Peterson, you can say, oh, he's 36 years old. He didn't do too well last year for the Lions. One, that's the Lions. And number two, <laughs> I'm sorry, him and Frank Gore are ageless, and they always will be. So, yeah. Um, it's prove it time, though, for Ryan Tannehill, because the run game is not going to be as strong as it was with Derrick Henry. No. Um, this is his time to prove that he is not just a middle-tier quarterback, mm -hmm. um, but that he is a franchise quarterback. So this is the real chance for uh, Mike Vrabel to finally see what he's got. Uh, see, for all the years that I've seen him um, play in Miami, it does not look very promising but for him. But they didn't him. have an offensive line there. I mean, true. And they didn't Don't get me wrong. a receiver core. Don't get me wrong, Tannehill Hall can look. be a good passer when he needs to be. Yeah. But the problem is, is that he really hasn't shown that good of, you know, being of that caliber this year. Again, Tennessee's offense was that of Derrick Henry. Yes, the Tennessee Titans still won the game alone for, you know, what it was with Derrick Henry being out on injury. Which sucks, you know. Yeah. First year drafting him, of course, you know, that has to happen. But, again, um, Ryan Tannehill... Yeah, he's going to have to go out there and prove it week in, week out, that he can still be relevant, even though Derrick Henry's not there. It, it's probably going to be a running back committee for McKinnon and... Um, I mean, uh, oh my gosh. I just McKinley or and, something McKinley, like that? I think it is. Yeah, McKinley and, uh, and Adrian Peterson. It's going to be a running back committee between both of them. They're going to share snaps. I don't think one's going to overpower the other. If anything, it's probably going to be yeah, McKinley over AP. Oh, McNichols, yeah, that's yeah. that's right. Um, uh, yeah. So, I just want to move on to my second point real quick. Um, yeah, go on. So, real quick, of course, we didn't mention this. I know this is a week eight recap, but can I just point out the trade deadline? And... You know, it wasn't as dramatic as years past. No, um, not at all. But what I will tell you is some of the trades were team-changing. Von Miller is now an L.A. Ram. And I think now this could put... Could this put them over the edge against Tampa Bay? Because we know Tampa Bay, it's theirs until someone takes it. I mean, the Packers are going to be in it too. But does this put them over the edge? 
Uh, I think so, because now you have two of the best pass rushers in the NFL. You also have Jalen Ramsey, who is a shutdown mm-hmm. corner. You have a very powerful offense. The Rams yeah. are just going to be way too tough. It's me this- and I think, I'm just going to say this now. Is this going to be a new trend where teams who host the Super Bowl are, are teams that, you know, like, you know, the city that they're, you know, that the team plays for, you know, that they'll start hosting their own Super Bowls because it seems like it's starting to head towards that direction. Started with Tampa Bay last year. I think it's going to be LA this year. I think the Rams will be there. I don't know who's going to be out there of the AFC. It could potentially be a Buffalo Rams Super Bowl. Of course, I would hate to yeah. see that because it'd be, it'd be one of the best offenses. It'd be one of the best. It would be two of the top defenses going up against each other, hmm. and two of the top offenses going up against each other. But it'd be a very defensive game. Don't get me wrong, but um, I think it's going to be starting to be that trend. Von Miller is definitely going to help out the Rams in a major way. He's going to bring he's a lot more pressure because, I hate to say it, you can double one pass rusher all you want, but the 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 cover the double cover two potential pass rushers, that's tough. That's going to leave somebody free to go up and sack co- opposing quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, I think it gives them a slight edge, honestly. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if he's healthy, he's one of the best in the game. He hasn't shown that he could stay healthy the last few years. But I'm telling you, when he was on the Chargers, I or when he was on the Broncos, I feared going against him. He is that good, mm-hmm. honestly. And if he could regain that form, and I'm telling you, Sean McVay oh, sure could bring will. it out of him. Oh, okay? yeah. Sean McVay, for all intents and purposes, is the best coach in the league right now. Okay. Yeah. You know, don't give, you know, don't discredit Mike LaFleur. Don't discredit um, Bruce Arians, you know, but I'm sorry. To me, Sean McVay is the best coach in the league right now. And you can say he's got talent galore, but guess what? He's got the coaching ability to get there as well. Okay. Right. I know he does. Okay. Here's the thing. Anyone, anyone can win with a, a loaded team, but can anyone coach a loaded team? Not necessarily. No. And uh, McVeigh can do it all, basically. Um, I want to say the two coaches that can honestly um, really coach a loaded team, if anything, I want to say is probably Sean McVeigh and Sean McDermott. The two Shawns yeah. can coach... I mean, Loaded offense, or, lo- yeah, loaded give, teams. Um, give Bruce Arians credit, too. I mean, yeah. Bruce Arians can coach any... I mean, Bruce Arians, even in Indy, when Chuck Pagano left to take cancer treatment... No, mm-hmm. look, um, obviously sad, and Pagano should have gotten his job back as he did, but, to be honest, I think if Bruce Arians stayed as the head coach of the uh, Colts, he could have had a lot of success. Um, I think he would have found more success than Chuck Pagano. And honestly, Andrew Luck probably would have had a better career, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, there's actually a part B to this uh, takeaway, um, adding to the trade deadline. So OBJ is going to be on waivers on Monday at 4 p.m. Um, mm-hmm. And let's face it, if he can return to form. Now, I don't think he's by any means a good receiver right now. I don't think he's top 5, top 10, even top 15. No. But I'm telling you, he could be a good addition to a team that doesn't have a good receiver. I'm telling you, New England, wake up, place a waiver claim on OBJ. Okay? New England, I think, would be the best fit for him because, let's face it, Bill Belichick is notorious for not putting up with people's shit, okay? OBJ brings a lot of baggage to a team, just like Antonio Brown did. So, obviously, I think the Raiders should not look at him right now. Um, I think the yeah. Saints don't need him. The Saints are a mm. high-power offense to begin with. They don't need him. 
No, I mean, Callaway is doing really well, yeah. and the other, um, I think it's Harris yeah. or something like that, they're doing good for New Orleans right now. I mean, yeah, they're, they're what, 5-2 and two right now, mm-hmm. doing pretty good stuff. I mean, they just beat up on the Bucks. Um, again, I think OBJ could... If he could return to form, would definitely be asset to whatever team he goes to. I mean, who knows? Like the Ravens are one of those teams. The uh, the the Patriots, the Saints. He he's one of those kind of guys that could go to these wide receiver needy teams. And I wouldn't really say that Ra- Baltimore is one of those receiver needy teams, but adding OBJ. And, and, you know, being in that division again doesn't look very promising yeah. for the Browns because you, you had them up with Baltimore, and I don't even know if they still have another matchup with Cleveland. I would assume they still they do. Um, who's to say he goes out there, plays up against the Brown, his, the, his former team in the Browns, and just goes off? Then, then how would Cleveland feel like, oh, how come you didn't do that with us? OBG would going to be like, well, you didn't give me the ball. Mm-hmm. Or, well, the mm-hmm. problem is, it was in the sense of, we weren't trying to get you the ball. We were trying to get you the ball. You just couldn't catch it. Yeah. You... But, but, honestly... But I guess there, I, I will say this now before we get into the, the last point is... um. There was many instances where apparently OBJ was getting open. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. And then Baker wasn't throwing him the ball. Well, when you're not able to, you know, catch passes, I'm sorry, but you're not going to have the faith of your quarterback yeah. to throw you the ball, even if you're open. <laughs> exactly. Can I point this out? Here's where uh, Baker, here's what Baker should have said in the uh, press conference. I don't know if he did or not. But I will say he said he should have said this. OBJ, we won without you, and guess what? We can still win without you. you. You know, because they won last year, they made the playoffs. They should have beaten the Chiefs last year in the playoffs. Without no, I know, I know. What it would have been Buffalo and Cleveland so, in the AFC Championship game. Let's face it; they haven't needed him for the last two years. Okay, and it showed. So give me a break, OBJ. And let me just put it this way. Again, I think New England is the team that should get him. But I will uh, leave it at that. I'm sure the Chiefs will try to claim him too because, you know, Kansas City's solution to everything is just beef up the offense. <laughs> um, I mean, they don't need any more guys. They already have freaking Josh Gordon, Travis Kelsey, you know, Tyreek Hill, Pringle. They got way too much. I'm sorry. They, they don't need, need OBJ. Defense. Um, but... um, I will say this. They did kind of focus on defense. Melvin the Chiefs. Ingram's not... They did trade for Melvin Ingram. He's... I know, but... I don't have any faith in him anymore. Um, But anyway, moving on to the third point. Speaking of the Chiefs, guess what? I'm not impressed by your win against the Giants. <laughs> No. You want to convince me that you're a t- you're still a Super Bowl threat? You should have beaten the Giants thirty-five to zip. Okay, <laughs> let me put it that way. Frankly, I with that bad defense, I would have even taken 50, 59 to twenty-four. Okay, you straight up and don't give me the uh, oh they gave us BS penalties. Okay, you know. Enough with the whole Brittany Mahomes honeycombs mouth sort of crap. <laughs> okay? I apologize. Um, but, yeah. Um, don't give me that crap, okay? No excuses here. You're you're the defending AFC champions. You are... You appeared in the last two Super Bowls. Okay? I, I'm not cutting you any slack. I don't care what you have on defense and what you don't. I don't care nope. what you have on offense and what you don't. Okay, you are not getting any more slack from me. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm going to be relentless, especially because we're going to so-called claim that Mahomes is the t- the best quarterback in the league. So, well, 
Okay. We, we seen it here before. He's definitely showing, showcasing he's and, not. And and let me put put it this way too: if they win this week, I'm not going to be impressed either. You want to know why? Because Aaron Rodgers isn't playing. I'm just going to say this now: four and four in eight weeks is not showcasing the Chiefs are yeah. the our team that could make playoffs this year shame. just just gonna say that now it's, it's a shame they needed the covid protocol to bail them out of a potential blowout against the packers okay because that's I know. that one's that one's gonna have an asterisk next to it as well uh if see, it happens i i'm just gonna say this now of course you know we're gonna go into those game predictions I'll go more into deep about it, but don't be shocked if somehow Jordan Love shows up. But he, of I guess course the he is. Okay, the Chiefs' defense is abysmal at best. Okay, the Chiefs' defense, I'm sorry, I hate Christmas before Thanksgiving, but if you've ever seen Elf and him going through that revolving door at the hotel, um, Will Ferrell doing that and just you know running through it <laughs> screaming, that's why yes. receivers all day on the Chiefs' defense, okay? <laughs> Because all they care to do is blitz, and their blitz is god awful. So, just so I throw that out there, those are, those are my points. So, Jason, I'll let you take it from here with yours. All right, I'm I'm gonna go with this first one. Josh Allen still proving he's in that MVP race, even though you know some weeks he's looking impressive, and in other weeks is mm-hmm. kind of not. But I think he's still in that tight MVP race. Uh, as much as he can be. Um, he did beat up on the Dolphins. He was... He completed 69% of his passes. I think it was like 29 for 42 or something like that. For like 270-something and um, two touchdowns. But let me tell you something. This man, I give him all the props, quits Twitter in the last couple of weeks... You want to know what happens with quitting Twitter? No distractions. And what does no distractions lead to? A lot more touches and a lot more um, involvement in the offense. This was a guy that was rumored to be on the way out because of his take on COVID and stuff like that. But the last two weeks, he showcased why he ain't going anywhere anytime soon, and I'm glad that he went off against the Dolphins. 10 catches, 110 yards, no touchdown, but you know what? It was enough to show that he ain't no, but he ain't no joke. And to any of these yeah. butthurt Dolphins fans for saying that Josh Allen's cocky for waving at the Dolphins. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. When you can't cover one of the best slot receivers in the NFL, you deserve to lose. And you lost 26-11. You deserve the loss. Quit your bitching. Just rack up the losses. You don't have a first-round draft pick this year, so good luck with having one of the crappiest records. the Texans are records. thanking them for it. Yep. And they're going to lose to the Texans, but we'll, they'll probably lose to the Texans, I should say. We'll see when we make if I was the Texans. But... If I was the Texans, I would tank. Try yeah. to do as much as you can to get that first yeah. overall pick. But um, can I just say this? While I do agree Josh Allen is an MVP candidate, and I, like I said... I mean, I think we're agreeing there. He is a MVP candidate. I don't think he's the top guy by any means because no. Kyler Murray, without a doubt, has a pretty decent hold on it. Um, no, that's why I said he's still he's proving yeah. he's still in that race, but he's not the top candidate. Yeah. It's, it's a very tight race. See, definitely him. I mean, 44-year-old Tom Brady is absolutely in that race. You know, whether we oh, yeah. admit it or not. But to be honest, it's looking more clear like it's going to be Kyler Murray or Josh Allen or Tom Brady at this point. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's looking very clear to say that. Um, I will say this now. Now that Derrick Henry's out of the picture, it, it, it definitely looks better for 
Kyler Murray, for Tom Brady, for Josh Allen. And honestly, you could even put um, uh, Cooper Cup in that discussion somehow, some way. It's, it, it, it's, it's a weird one, but you can kind yeah. of put him in that conversation. And honestly, if he doesn't win MVP, he's definitely going to win off- Offensive Player of the Year. By yeah. far. By far. And he should. Yeah, so... Um, got Mike White. Yeah, yeah. Uh, odd, odd name in there. Mike Watt, White was showcasing that he could have been a potential starter and quarterback in the league, but fortunately, unfortunately, uh, he he got hurt against the Colts, and then um, then they ended up having a, a another quarterback in there that apparently threw. Um, yeah, yeah. Long three time- touched. Longtime journeyman, uh, Josh Johnson, who, by the way, how the hell is he still in the league? Um, and if anybody doesn't know about Josh Johnson, he was a former Buffalo Bill, too. He was everywhere. He's he's pretty much Ryan. He's pretty much been around more than Ryan Fitzpatrick has. Um, but should I just point this out that now? I've always not been a huge fan of the, uh, oh, well, Colin Kaepernick should still be in the league um, because Colin Kaepernick's last few years were abysmal. Mm-hmm. But I will say that we don't let, we haven't let Colin Kaepernick have a job, but yet somehow Josh Johnson gets one and Josh I, I Johnson's done nothing in his career. I have no idea. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out there, that if we're going to pick quarterbacks that don't do anything, let's start with Colin Kaepernick, okay? Yeah, right. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I mean, Josh Johnson was impressive, but again, mm-hmm. he's not by any means a guy who should be on an NFL roster. Just throwing that out there. I'm going to also say this now that it's kind of sad that the combination of Mike White and Josh Johnson have doubled the amount of touchdowns that Zach Wilson has in his rookie year. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson has only thrown four touchdowns in his rookie year. Combined, Mike White and Josh Johnson have eight. I think that's insane to think about. Um, if I'm Robert Sala or whatever his last yeah, name yeah, is, if I look at the situation, yeah, Mike White got hurt. Now you have Josh Johnson. You're and you're probably waiting for Zach Wilson to come back from injury. I hate to say it. I think heading into next year, you're gonna have to have a QB battle between Mike White and Zach Wilson. I think you're going to have to have Zach Wilson earn it. Absolutely. But if I'm Robert Sala, I would probably go with Mike White the rest of the year. Nothing against Zach Wilson, but he has proved a hot hand. He have he has not shown he's worth a yeah. damn as a second overall pick okay. in this year's draft. But can I just point out that Josh Allen also had himself a slow start in his career? And frankly, there were points where Josh Allen showed he shouldn't even be a quarterback one in this league. Um, so I, I just want to say, don't write. I'm I'm gonna keep beating this drum. Don't write him off just yet, because I'm telling you, in a few years, he might just break through. I mean, you you're probably right. And this is what I'm also gonna say too. In that time that Josh Allen was out those six games. There was nobody that was better and impressive than Josh Allen. In this case of the, with the Jets, Mike White is showcasing that he's better than Wilson, which is a situation where he, he might take that job, and I don't know if Zach Wilson might get it back until Mike White, who knows, gets hurt again yeah. type of thing. You know, well, that, it it's, it's a but You know, when, when it was Josh Allen's uh, rookie year and he was out, with you know the injury 17 or um, 18 yeah it was Derek Anderson and it was also um Matt Barkley yeah but Matt they Barkley the, has never amounted to anything no him and Derek Anderson 
Anderson never amounted to like anything, and Buffalo, to my knowledge, only had didn't even win one game during that span that Josh Allen was out. See, imagine if they had a young hot shot as the backup, like Mike White or a Gardner Minshew, for that matter. Okay, mm-hmm. imagine if they had that young hot shot in the wings who could come out and put up a game in his first try. Okay. I then would it would be hard to give Josh Allen his job yeah, yeah. back type of thing. That's that what I'm getting at. It would be <laughs> hard to give 2017 or 2018 Josh Allen his job back. It wouldn't mm-hmm. be so hard to get. I mean, it'd be a lot harder now to give him, or it'd be a lot easier to give his job back, assuming that that happened. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, I mean, it would be easier to say, Mitchell Trubisky, we can get something for him. And I'm shocked that Buffalo didn't try to see what kind of value they could have got out of him. I mean, of course, you don't want to get rid of your um, your backup quarterback, but worst case, if that was to happen, they could have relegated um, Davis Webb to the active roster as his backup. I mean, just saying. Like, there's there's still another quarterback. But, um, again, going forward... A name that you wouldn't have never would have thought would have beaten the GOAT of quarterbacks. Trevor freaking Simeon. I don't know how the hell he did it. He didn't have the most impressive numbers in the world. But Trevor Simeon beats Tom Brady, Bucks, in New Orleans. Wow. Is this the point where I can officially make this comment and Saints fans agree with me, disagree with me? I I don't care anymore, okay? I think this proves that Drew Brees, and don't get me wrong, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer all the way, Mm -hmm. but I think this proves all these years Drew Brees is a system quarterback. Plain and simple. He was a good product of the system that Sean Payton put forward. Okay? And yeah. here's why here's why I say this. Look at the records of all the backups that have come in in the times Drew Brees has gotten hurt. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater was 5 and 0. Oh. Jameis Winston led this team to I believe 6 and 3 so far. I think or 7 and 2. Five, I think they're 5 and 2 or 5 and 2. Something like that. Um, it might actually be on the uh, scores and whatnot. Buffalo, yeah, I th- I th- yeah. So, you know, I think the argument can be made now that Drew Brees was a system quarterback because, again, Jameis Winston came out hot. Taysom Hill is the most god awful passer in the league. I mean, we give <laughs> we give Lamar Jackson flack for being a running back. That's what Taysom Hill is at the end of the day, and yet somehow they still win with him. Um, I mean, but look at how you're set up though. You got Alvin Kamara in the backfield. You got when he's not being a total asshole. You got uh, Michael Thomas, <laughs> slant boy, and then you've got um, Marquez Callaway over there who's been playing pretty well. Um. For years, uh, you had Josh Hill, who's been an underrated tight end by every stretch of the imagination. Right. Um, You know, so I think we can make the argument, because Trevor Simeon is a god-awful quarterback, much like, um, he's not like Taysom Hill, but he's just a god-awful quarterback. So I, I think we can make that argument now that the Saints are a... Um, system offense, and that's how they do so well. I mean, I, I would agree with that. Now, again, Drew Brees is a goat of the league. I mean, I guess the same thing could be said about Sean McVay, too. I mean, look at what Jerichoff did in L.A., and now he's doing absolutely crap in Detroit. So, But look at where he went, okay? You're saying Matt Stafford, before he went... Look at Matt Stafford's time in Detroit. Matt Stafford was still putting up fringe Hall of Fame numbers in Detroit. True. And he had, and not to mention, he had Galladay, who was still pretty decent at that time. I guess I can also say that, like, 
I mean, look at all you the know, pieces. Th- it depends left. on the quarterback, too. Look at look at all the pieces that left Detroit when when uh, Jared Goff got traded there. That's all you need to know about why Jared Goff is not doing so hot. Right. Okay. And then look at all the pieces in L.A. to begin with that not only did Jared Goff have, but Matt Stafford inherited and added to that team. Hence why they're so, 7-1. <laughs> yeah. So, again, I think the argument can be made for the Saints because... Again, look at the product of success over there. When everyone in the world thought they were probably done when Drew Brees got hurt last year and the year before that. Um, you know, I don't know how the hell they keep on end up being a, a playoff team. I will say this now. They might end up being a playoff team, but I don't think they're win- going very far. They're not winning the division. I can tell you that right now. Oh, I know they're not. Yeah, and if any Saints fan believes that they are, you clearly ha- need to lay off the weed. Plain and simple. No more Mardi Gras for you. Now, I need to know, did the, I would assume the Saints and Bucks play each other... One more time. One more time. I don't know when, but they do play one more time. <sighs> don't be shocked if somehow the Saints do sweep the Bucks for a second year in a row. So I doubt it. But anyway, now's a good time probably to take our break, right? Yes, um, yes, let's so take let's that break. It. We'll we'll make our week nine predictions, our week ten Thursday night football pick, and then we got Tinkle on this coming your way. But we'll be right back here on Tinkle Sports Talk in just a moment. Welcome back, pick time, Browns and Bengals, Cincinnati a two and a half favorite. Mmm. I'm probably going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals at this point. Yeah, I hate to agree with that, but the Browns have too much distractions right now with OBJ, so I'm going to go Bengals. Um, Anyway, Browns, or Broncos and Cowboys. Cowboys a 10-point favorite. Do we kind of agree here? Yeah, Cowboys. (laughs) Cowboys. Regardless if Dak is back or not. Yeah, they're going to go to 7-1. and one. Here's one that might be tough to predict. Texans-Dolphins, Tyrod expected to start, Miami a 5.5 favorite. See, if Miami had everybody healthy, I probably would have gone with them to get their first win after seven straight losses. But I hate to say it, it's going to be eight straight losses. Houston's going to... Yeah. Get the win over Miami. Yeah, I'm going to go Houston here. If Tyrod does play, or whether he does or not, I think Tyrod gives them a big edge there in that game. Because Tyrod's a good quarterback. He just really never got a fair shot. So, right. Um, anyway, Falcons, Saints. Saints a six-point favorite. But again, we don't know who's starting for the Saints. Hmm... I've heard something about Hills coming back off of um, IR, so I would assume Taysom Hill, uh, if not Trevor Simeon. This one's this one's these tough. two te- these two teams always play each other tough. Hmm. But my heart, my gut's telling me the Saints over yeah. the Falcons. Ah, uh, see, I don't want to play if so and so starts, if so and so doesn't start. To be honest, if the Saints win, it's going to be a sloppy game. I don't want to say ugly because I don't think it's going to be a blowout, but I think it's going to be a two point game at best. Um, but I'm going to go with the Saints just barely in that one. Um, Raiders and Giants, Vegas three point favorites, and I would have to say this is a pretty safe one to make. Yeah, I want to go with the Vegas Raiders over the Giants. Oh, man. I don't think the Giants are going to go down very easy in this one. Um, But the 
Raiders don't have their top receiver. Henry Ruggs done for the year. Actually, maybe done for his career after that uh, DW or DUI incident. Um, of course, we're choosing not to talk about it or go into right. detail about it just because we don't have the full details yet. Um, and we don't want to weigh in on criminal investigations here. This is a sports network. Um, mm. But I... I got to admit, the Raiders, if, if they can pull this off, knowing all the distractions that they've had all year with John Gruden and now Henry Ruggs, I got to give them a lot of credit. Um, but I'm going to go with the Raiders by three, like it says. Um, but I think Danny Dimes makes it an interesting game. So um, I Pat, think so. Pats and Panthers in the Patriots are three and a half favorites, and should I also mention they are the resident road warriors, three and zero on the road. Oh, the New England. Yep, New England has not lost on the road all year. Uh, that doesn't look very promising for Bill Buffalo on Monday night, but that's just me. <laughs> um. Uh. See, this is a tough one to call because it could potentially be Christian McCaffrey's return. But New England's been... You know what? I'm going New England over Carolina. I don't care who's starting at running back. New England's been looking good. They're coming off of a nice win against uh, the, the Chargers. I think they're going to go to over 500 for the first time this season. I think they're rolling right now. They're on a hot streak. The Panthers not so much, so I'm going to go New England. Um, here we go. This one should be an easy game to predict. Very easy to predict, I should say. Um, Bills, Jags, Bills, 14 and a half favorite. But before you make your pick, can I just point out that every single active player that has gone on the Manning cast, their team has lost in the next week. I don't know if that weighs into your decision, but... Um, okay, so the funny thing is, they there. they said that they don't have the very best track record with wearing white on blue. Let me be clear that Buffalo has only lost one game with wearing those jerseys. That first loss, week one, they were wearing white on white. So wearing white jerseys doesn't bode very well for Buffalo for whatever reason, but... They just beat Miami wearing alternate all-white jerseys. So, mm -hmm. I, I I don't think that curse is relevant anymore. Um, As far as the Manning cast, I don't think that's going to matter. Jacksonville just got their asses beat by a backup quarterback who hasn't really been all that good in his whole entire career. And Geno Smith. Mm-hmm. Now you got Josh Allen. The offense is cooking. The defense is cooking. The defense is going to make Trevor Lawrence's day a living nightmare. So I'm going to go with Buffalo. And I think 14 and a half is the correct yeah. amount of points. I'm going to go with that. But I do want to say as much as we give Geno Smith a ton of shit for being a career bust... Gino also has one of the best offenses in the league around him, and Tyler Lockett, um, DK Metcalf, um, Carson when healthy, although the uh, Alex Collins has been a hell of a running back for him too. So right. I just want to point that out real quick, um, just for the sake of pointing it out. Um, anyway, um, Vikings and Ravens. Um, the Ravens are a six-point favorite. I'm definitely going to go with the Ravens over the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, they're 1-2 and two on the road, and they kind of got hosed down by a backup for uh, the Cowboys, so I'm going to go with the Ravens as well. Um, Chargers and Eagles. Chargers a point-and-a-half favorite. A point-and-a-half favorite? Wow. <laughs> I they don't struggled. think they're... They struggled in the last two weeks. I'm honestly shocked that they're four and three right now. I would have thought that the Chargers would have been doing a hell of a lot better. 
I'm not but, shocked. Philadelphia is riding the hot, a pretty hot hand. They just beat um, Detroit 44 to... I think forty-four to seven or something like that. Hmm. It was it was a beatdown. Um, I I'm gonna go with the Chargers. I think they're gonna get their act together and yeah. beat up on Philadelphia. Philly's defense isn't that impressive. I mean, they're good, but I don't think that they're by any stretch of the imagination impressive. The Chargers are also good on the road, so I'm gonna take the Chargers here in this one. Um, Packers and Chiefs, what was supposed to be the game of the week, now is kind of a dud. Um, the Chiefs are a seven-point favorite. Chiefs are a seven-point favorite? Yeah. Hmm. I think that they're... I, I want to say I'm still going to go with the Packers. I think uh, Michael LaFleur has a gr- is going to have a great game plan for Jordan Love heading to this game. Yes, Jordan Love isn't the same kind of quarterback as Aaron Rodgers is, but just with how much talent you got, Devontae Adams coming off of COVID as a top receiver, um, you you got Randall Cobb. You have other guys that are going to do well, like Aaron Jones. It's just a beast of a running back. I, I think they're going to... There's going to be just too much talent, and I think they're going to find any way possible to have Jordan Love. I mean, Love isn't a bad quarterback. I think he's going to find a way to beat up, to beat the Kansas City Chiefs here. I'm going to say Green Bay goes to 8-1. and one. There's only one other kicker outside of uh, Justin Tucker that I would trust in the final minutes, and I could tell you his name is not Mason Crosby. Okay. <laughs> I know his Harrison name, Butker. His name is Harrison Butker. And I'm telling you, if it comes down to the final possession, I trust Harrison Butker and I trust Patrick Mahomes um as well. For as much shit as I give Patrick Mahomes, I trust him. Um so I gotta go Chiefs here. It's at home for the Chiefs. Um and again, they have uh the fact that Rodgers isn't playing in their favor right now. So mm-hmm. that's the main reason I'm gonna go with them. Um, anyway, Cardinals and Niners, um, San Fran, a two point favorite. Interesting. Probably because those two teams play each other so tough because they're division rivals. Probably home field but too. I will say Arizona has the better team. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with the Cardinals over the 49ers. I don't care if it's. Kittle returning or not? Kittle returning uh, is huge, but this is just not the game that's going to play in their favor. No. So, I got to agree with you here. I'm going to go Cardinals. No. Next one. Um, it's going to be an interesting football. one. Titans and Rams. And this game could have been, as well, another game of the week here. Had... Derrick Henry stayed healthy. The Rams are a seven-point favorite, Titans and Rams. I'm going to go with the Rams over the Tennessee Titans. And that would have still been the same response I would have had if they had Derrick Henry healthy or not. Because there's just way too much talent on that defense. I'm telling you, Von Miller is coming in with a whole new energy, a whole new mindset. I, I, I like this one for the Rams. I think this one's going to be the blowout of the week right here. It's going to be a rough day if you're Ryan Tannehill. Um, this one's going to be a good game, the Monday night game, but for all the wrong reasons because both teams aren't that good. Um, <laughs> Bears and Steelers. Steelers a six and a half point favorite. I'm going to go with the Steelers. Only because I think that Steelers have a very underrated defense and will make Justin Fields. Um, Did you not th- see Justin Fields run last week? By the way, dude almost fell over. Should have gotten sacked, and then he ran the other way for a touchdown. <laughs> really? 
he's still a bust, but I, I, I gotta, I gotta give him respect there. I, I think it was either last week or a few weeks ago. Something. Uh, I think Pittsburgh's got way too good of a defense, and yeah, yeah. Justin Fields has not shown very well against very good opposing defenses. Yeah. So I think Justin Fields is gonna be looking like a bum against. Yeah. TJ Watt. TJ Watt is going to have a feast of a day. I'm going to agree with you there. Um, so I'm going to go with the Steelers. I was going to lean toward the Bears, but now that you mentioned that, oh. I think that's a good point to make. Um, Thursday night football, another weak game at best. But mind you, after week 10... We skip ahead to week 11. Oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. I got the dates all confused. Week 12, we've got three Thursday night football games, or Thursday football games. But I'm um, just looking ahead real quick. But anyway, for this Thursday night, the Ravens and the Dolphins, how are the Ravens only six and a half point favorites? Can I just, can I just rant on that for a second? <laughs> okay. I just don't understand it. I really don't. Okay. For as cursed as the Chargers are against New England, the Ravens, or I'm sorry, the Dolphins are just as cursed against the Ravens. <laughs> I know they are. So they have had not, they have not had the best track record against the Ravens whatsoever. Yep. And don't be shocked if it's one of those games where it's like a 44-7 type of. Yep. Feel that's what because they done it. They they've done it to them before. They'll do it to them again. Yep. So we're both on board here, Ravens for sure. Oh, I'm uh, I'm going Ravens. Yep. Um. So I, I hate to say it. I don't know when Miami is gonna win another game again. Yeah. They could pro they could possibly go the rest of the year just not winning another game. I can see it. But anyway, tinkle on this time. I think. <laughs> So I'll yes. let you say it this week because you're the one who uh, brought it up to me, actually. And I didn't see it, quite frankly. So, if anybody was, you know, if anybody's a Nets fan, definitely not me. I'm a, I'm a Mavericks fan. No. Nope. But, um, so James Harden, who has been notoriously bad and ridiculed on his bad defense, got the ball... Um, or turn over the ball on his own shoe. The ball was rolling. Bay from the Detroit Pistons. Uh, or he's running after the ball. Just lets it keep on rolling, rolling, rolling. Bay from the Detroit Pistons. Picks up the ball. James Harden just stands there. Does absolutely nothing as Bay just goes in for an easy dunk. And then the players are like, Oh man, I think he just like, you know... There was there was a caption like oh when uh when your James Harden was like just like all the players um that end up having their controllers um turn off on them type of thing just let you know the player go right past them for that's what it seemed like for me and for that James Harden Tinkle yes you were on check you were on checked in on the full but on here you were on tinkle on this. Yep. And that's worse than shacting a fool, should I mention. Okay. Yeah. You're a fool for that, though. Seriously, how do you not real Like, that's just common IQ right there. That's IQ all day and common sense. Um, so, yeah, I agree with you there. Tinkle on this, James Harden. You are an idiot. Um... Like, that's why I said, like, he's been ridiculed many times for his defense, but you can't just let the guy get the ball. If it's rolling, you gotta just, like, make an effort to get the ball and play some offense. You can't just let the other team get the ball, steal it, and get an easy dunk like that. I don't even care if you still, if you do have the lead or not. If, I, if I'm, uh... Steve Nash, I would pull him aside like, what the hell is that, James? That player would have been on the bench for me. Keep in mind, those who don't normally watch, I am a basketball coach normally. But that player would have been on the bench for me. Um, 
By the way, college basketball is coming back this week, so this should be a fun season. Um, just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, back with fans. Yep. Um, but that's all we got for this week. No moral discussion on that, just other than James Harden's an idiot. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. real quickly, though, I do want to bring this up. How's about I sweeten the deal for uh, No Shave November? Um, so we mentioned it at the beginning. Join our team or join our uh, donation page. I will have the link in the descriptions once again this week. Um, if you do donate, you don't have to list your name. You can do it anonymously. But if you do decide to list your name, as long as you are not a Tinkle employee, and I'm pointing to your brother, I'm pointing to me and to you, as long as you are not a Tinkle employee or former employee, we will give you a shout out at the top of the next Tinkle Sports Talk show. So, just want to throw that out there. Normally, people do this with Patreon, but we want to recognize our donors for um, this great cause. So, if you do donate to No Shave November and you are not a former or current Tinkles, Tinkle personality, we will shout out your name live <laughs> on Sunday morning at 9.03 when the premiere is officially started. There, I can't yeah. sweeten the deal anymore. <laughs> okay, I can't sweeten it anymore. They won't let me. Okay. They won't let you. <laughs> By they, I mean me. I won't let me sweeten the deal anymore because I'm the guy <laughs> in charge here. So, um, but yeah, so just so I throw that out there. Um, so please donate. I will be donating very soon myself. I just haven't had the finances to be able to do it just yet, but I will soon. Um, mark my words at no shave, mark my words. You will get a donation from me. Um, so another thing though, on the side note, again, links below, but I do want to say this. So out of turn four, final episode this Tuesday for the season, um, it will be on Facebook watch as well. So that's just another programming note I wanted to put out there. So we will have it on YouTube and Facebook Watch Tuesday at 5 p.m. Yeah, I also wanted to make this programming note. Um, yeah, we're okay. We're recording on a Friday. Uh, no final bell. Well, this will be coming out Sunday, mm -hmm. but no final bell episode 11 will be, unfortunately, Saturday morning. But going forward, I'm going to make it my mission to make it come out every Wednesday at 5, yeah. as we'll probably record every Sunday, because your boy just works every single day of his life. <laughs> yeah, same here. So, um, just wanted to throw those out there. Um, you know, we just thought we wanted to throw those programming notes out. We also have the gaming channel coming soon. Um, the the uh, link to the gaming channel, if you go to our actual YouTube channel here at Tinkle Sports and Entertainment... You click other channels, it's right there. Um, so be sure to check it out. It's listed as GCN right now. We will be flipping it over to um, Tinkle Group Gaming in the coming weeks here. So just wanted to throw that all out there. Um, we're still uh, kind of adjusting to the new way of doing things here. Of course, I'm now the guy in charge. Um, so Jason, you're fired. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but... Just, hey, man, we're both owners, so uh, we can only fire each other, I guess. <laughs> hey, we'll see, we'll see about that. But anyway, <laughs> thank you all for watching. Um, we will see you back here next Sunday. Until then, goodbye, everyone.